The hand meets certain stability requirements to function and to be used in everyday life. These are, you can almost think about them as what the position of the wrist and the fingers need to be before you pick up a cup or before you use it. So there's the stability requirements towards function. Firstly is the wrist needs to be in slight extension. Okay, so look, look at when you reach out for your water bottle that your wrist isn't bent forward, it is slightly back, and that allows the working of the tendons and muscles on the front and the back, and that is the flexor surface and the extensor surface. That stability of the wrist allows for that tendons to work optimally. Next one is the MCP, the metacarpophalangeal joints, that is your knuckle joints, needs to also be in slight flexion, about 30 to 45 degrees to be able to grasp. We often refer to this as the intrinsic plus or lumbrical grip, which we will look at and you will visually see that a little bit later. Then when moving on to the thumb, the thumb, now as you reach for your bottle, your water bottle or your cup of coffee again, look at where your thumb is. As you, just before you touch the bottle, your thumb is moved away from your index finger and that is, and it opens up the first web space of the hand. Okay, we call that thumb abduction. It's difficult to grasp with your thumb still close to your index finger. The next point is the thumb also needs a degree of opposition. That is the movement when you reach towards your little finger with your thumb. That round movement is called opposition. That also helps, plays a role in gripping. Then, lastly, the fingers, as you reach and you grip, they need to flex. But when you put down your cup of coffee, your fingers also need to release back into extension. So that interaction between closing the fingers and opening the fingers, you will need muscles that will give you both that for grips and grass. So it's not just closing, but you also need to release.